In this video, we're going to be focusing on how to create a scene within Vortex Studio. The scene document is where we're going to be defining the environment where the simulation will take place. Now that could be an outside environment or it could be the inside of a building. Either way, we're going to be importing the 3D assets that will represent the environment that we want to simulate and specifying things like the material types for that environment. And we're also going to be adding various mechanisms that we've constructed within the tool. So to create a new scene, I'm going to select the Scene button here on the New Document page, and I'm going to click on the Create button. The very first thing you'll notice when you create a new scene is that there is no grid as opposed to mechanisms. That's because here we're going to be importing the 3D assets that will represent the virtual environment where we're going to run the simulation, and this is where the mechanism will rest. So that is where we'll have solid ground to be able to operate on. To be able to add that terrain inside of the scene, I'm going to go here inside of the environment section of the toolbox and I'll have a, an element here called terrain from file. What I'll do here is I'm going to double click on this icon and this will bring up a dialog where I can select which terrain file I want to use as well as do a number of configurations for how that terrain will be managed by Vortex. The very first field we're going to have here is the source field. And so here I can specify which terrain I want to load. Now for the purpose of this video, I'm going to load in one of the graphic galleries that's already been created within Vortex. And so I'll see this under the studio samples, under environment, warehouse, graphic, and I'm going to load in warehouse ground. Now that's going to give me only the ground section of the forklift warehouse that we deliver as part of the Vortex samples. Now if you want to load your own 3D terrain, what you would do before coming here would be to go in and create a new graphics gallery and import your 3D assets inside of that gallery. But in this case, I'm going to directly start from an existing graphics gallery. So as I said, I'm going to go and load a terrain from file and then go in and load in my warehouse ground. Now once I've done that, I get to start configuring the materials for that terrain. The first thing that I'll be able to specify is what's going to be the default material uh, everywhere in the terrain. And so in this case, I could go and specify something like ground. If you'll recall, when we did the forklift mechanism, we had ground as our grid material everywhere within the simulation. Now after that, you can create additional rules to be able to specify how we're going to assign materials to different parts of the terrain. Now these rules can work by two ways. They can be either assigned by node, so that is the names of the graphic nodes that are created inside of the 3D model, or they can be created by texture. Of course, if you want to do that by texture, uh, you'll need to do a little bit more research within your terrain to look at what are the textures that have been assigned to all the different areas where you uh, want to assign a different material type. So once I have, I want to create a rule, I can click the add rule button. I can write in here a name for the rule. So that's going to be using regular expression syntax. And then on the other side, I can specify which material is going to be assigned to those elements, whether they're selected by node or by material. What I can also specify in here are a number of parameters for what is called UV grid division. So Vortex is going to divide the terrain into multiple subsections. And so here we have a default set of parameters that will work in a lot of situations. But if you do end up having a simulation where there's a lot of computation that occurs around detecting collisions with the terrain, you may need to modify these parameters. I should specify here that it's possible to go back and modify these parameters at any time, both the list of material classification rules and the UV grid parameters. So that allows you to be able to go back and always make some changes and run the simulation again to see how that may improve your performance. In this, so for this example, I'm going to just set a default material of ground and no other rules, and then I'm going to click OK, and that's going to import my terrain. So as we can see, this graphic gallery is quite simple. There are two levels to it. There's a base ground floor that's everywhere inside of the environment, and there is an upper floor as well.